I'm Rachel Miller Houghton, and this is another summer seminar series. My presentation is called The Ballad of Tess Catalano, University of Iowa activist and musician. So we'll start with Tess Catalano as a student. She was born in 1959 in Ohio, and when her father Cosmo got a job at the University of Iowa teaching theater, the family moved. Tess attended West High and was involved with a lot of things there. She was pre predominantly a thespian and even a card carrying member of the International Thespian Society. In this 1977 production of You Can't Take It With You, Tess was the student director and was wished very many well wishes by her peers on her graduation. We have several of Tess's yearbooks in our collection, and they show Tess involved in a number of activities. In addition to being a thespian, she was also in the Winter Swing Show uh, with a partner, and they danced to Hernando's Hideaway, which I'm sure is a lost classic. She and another group of students on the right um, are also participated in spring break in Washington, D.C. and United Nations. They uh, went to New York and D.C., um, attended the United Nations, a few Broadway productions, and met with Iowa Senators Culver and Clark, as well as Congressman Leach. We see in this next slide that Leach wrote a letter, presumably to everybody, but Tess kept hers and is pictured here on the steps of the Capitol with her class and other peers. This is Tess's um, senior photo and she's seen here in 1977. Tess was also a singer and sang for most of her life. Um, here she's listed as a first alto. So as a musician, Tess was involved with a lot of different productions and was a singer songwriter and also involved her music in her activism. So here she's seen opening for Palaver in 1989. It says, Tess is a lesbian singer, songwriter, bus driver, activist. Another piece of memorabilia that we have in her papers is Tess, not too many depressing songs, a concert at the coffee house. This was a women's coffee house. And it says underneath, all women welcome. Tess was often involved in women's spaces in the 80s, and there were quite a few in Iowa City at the time. Here we have some music that was in Tess's files. Now, both of these were not written by Tess, but she either transcribed them, like um, the calling the spirits of queer ancestors on the right, or casual sex. Um, she wrote the music to. So she wrote some silly stuff and some more serious things as well. Um, this one is written by Tess herself, copyright 1981, and it's called Women in Arms. We see her pencil notation and then the actual copy that she made. We are every struggling, struggling woman in arms. She also has the classic mustache song, which is one that my mother remembered when I asked her if she knew Tess. They were peers and classmates. And it's a song about Tess's mustache um, from 1984. And she says, my mustache is small, delicate, and dark, but I've admired women with hair rough as bark. You really haven't lived till you felt this 
friendly cilia of a woman's facial hair. So in addition to being a serious activist, she was a not so serious to say, um, writer, but she had an incredible voice. And that voice we will get to hear at the end of this presentation when we her lasting legacy it's nice to, that we get to see her voice in fact um it appears on this cd from 1995 it's called prairie voices music from the iowa women's music festival and on the left we can see a program from the 1994 um, festival which was held in the Johnson County Fairgrounds and had a weekend of events with a day stage that included Tess, as well as other Iowa notable women like Rusty Barcelo, Barbara Boyle, etc. And later we'll hear Tess's song, Fitting In, or Fittin' In. So speaking of fitting in, Tess fit in with her softball teams. Um, she was a member of a few and the rosters are in the Jill Jack papers also held at the I Iowa Women's Archives. They are from the mid eighties, I believe. And if you or somebody you know knew Tess or played softball with her, um, please come down and see Tess's files because there are several photos, not just of her, of unnamed people playing softball, and it would be great to be able to identify them. So these are some photos of Tess in action. Um, she was an athlete for her whole life, and she is wearing an Emma Goldman Clinic shirt, which was a place that she worked at and which we'll talk about a little bit later. So Tess Catalano, feminist activist. These first um, papers deal with Phyllis Schlafly. So Schlafly was a Republican conservative woman who was opposed to the Equal Rights Amendment and toured the country in opposition of it speaking and ironically against feminism using her massive platform as a woman. And a theater troupe in Berkeley, California sent out information pamphlets for people who wanted to go to Phyllis Schlafly's presentations and protest a little bit. Now, these were not your usual protesters. They were, in fact, satirists, and they called themselves Ladies Against Women. Their motto was, what do we want? Nothing. When do we want it? Now. And they were encouraged to dress like typical housewives, um, she had to wear heels, had to have a small, tasteful picket. This one shows um, you're nobody till you're Mrs. Somebody. And basically the whole thing was put together into a consciousness lowering kit, which at the time, consciousness raising groups were very popular and necessary parts of feminist life. Um, I know a lot of people in my generation don't know what consciousness raising, what that means in context, but many of you will remember that they were um, often community groups of women who were trying to get involved in politics and um, not just politics, but really raising their consciousness about the role of women in the world, rights for women, activism, etc., and just educating themselves and each other. So the consciousness lowering kit of Ladies Against Women was making fun of Phyllis Schlafly and every anti-feminist woman. Um, there are actually photos of Tess um, at a anti-Schlafly demonstration. She did not dress like a lady against women, unfortunately, because Tess was very pro-women. Um, this article and these photos are from a conservative campus paper that is making fun of Tess for being there and for her appearance as well. Um, but 
I chose them as an example of Tess's incredible presence because she was obviously a leader and she um, was at, appears at the microphone several times. Um, you can see in the crowd, there are quote unquote ladies against women. And um, she talked to Schlafly and asked her questions about her positions against women. So Tess did not only appear in the newspapers as the butt of a joke, but also as her writing her own story. Um, Tess was a very prolific writer and her files contain a lot of different thoughts of hers, be they handwritten notes to typewriting all the way up to um, paper editorials, guest opinions. This one she wrote with two other people. It's called The Fight Against Heterosexism and talks mentions Audre Lorde and lesbian lives and um, basically against the patriarchy, against homophobia, and is just a really strongly worded opinion. Um, there's another article here of many, there are quite a few, um, that was part of a series for women's opinions. And this was while she was a student. Um, and it's her vision of a feminist university, basically outlining that it needs to come from the United States government. Well, this was while Reagan was president and all the way down to Iowa. So sort of a turning on the head of Reagan's trickle down economics. She wanted trickle down equality and um, feminist rights, basic women's rights. So she not only wrote um, and spoke her advocacy for women, she also worked at the Emma Goldman Clinic, which to this day is a nonprofit women's health clinic in Iowa City. She was part of it when um, it was still a women's collective and there were no, there was supposed to be no hierarchies and um, the women who worked there and volunteered there um, were given the power to make all sorts of decisions and they helped a lot of different um, people with reproductive rights, with everything from menstrual care to abortions. Here's another undated photo of the Emma Goldman Clinic staff um, and Tess appears in the pink shirt. And we also have a photo of her that is unfortunately blurry, but is a nice close up of Tess um, rocking her cool dyed hair and her mustache. So Tess did not limit her activities to just women's rights or lesbian rights. She also was an anti-apartheid activist um, during the 80s. Um, divestment from South Africa and companies that supported apartheid was something that was encouraged not just by University of Iowa activists, but was a um, national conversation, in fact, a global conversation. So Tess was a organizer for the um, anti-apartheid protest and actions, and she kept lists of sure it's there's Tess's list of surefire calls, people who are lawyers and um, had power in the community in case of arrests. And she kept thing, lists of things that you need to bring to an event, to an action, um, pre-action considerations. And they went to these events with the intention of causing civil disobedience, basically, and were often arrested in great numbers of students. Um, they weren't charged because they were exercising their right to protest as students, which was not against the law. So um, Tess also kept a list um, and in her handwriting says, these are the corporations that the University of Iowa owns stock in. These corporations have investments in South Africa. So she wanted the university to divest from South Africa. And it's a huge list of very important 
um, very large companies. And that was part of the action of that day. There's also a list of demands of University of Iowa students who were protesting in solidarity with Fasters um, representing the Iowa Coalition Against Apartheid. So those are people who were fasting and they had many supporters, including Tess, who organized a lot for them. I've been taking these title cards from her actual card, which reads Tess Catalano, Feminist at Large. Um, and if you knew her and her sense of humor, and although I didn't personally know her, you get a good sense of her humor through her papers. Um, you know that it's sort of a triple entendre on her being a large woman, on being a feminist, and on being at large in that she was everywhere and could not be contained, basically. Um, an example of another action that Tess took was writing letters to the editor. This one was to Ms, the feminist magazine, in which she tells them, you've sold out. You went slick and just couldn't stop. Ms, you've succumbed to the biggest male power trip of all, big bucks. And it's because they aired an ad um, for Neutrogena shower gel in which a, the disembodied hand and backside of a woman is shown. And Tess found that um, pornographic and um, also insulting to women. She also wrote to not only the FCC, but also three Iowa um, TV studios in protest of a Playboy magazine ad that she saw on TV. Um, she was against violent pornography and against the depictions of gratuitous depictions of nudity for women, which in the year 1980 was not at all uncommon for many feminists. Um, and she talks about the media being a powerful tool and it making an impression on not only young people, but also those who have survived um, sexual violence and signs a letter in addition to a few other women who were also um, coordinators for the Rape Victim Advocacy Group, as well as Women's Resource and Action Center members and administrators. So Tess worked very hard for um, advocacy for women and for survivors and Take Back the Night was and may still be um, a movement for women to basically reclaim a space, a, a half, half of the day in which it's not considered safe for women because of the ways in which we are attacked and violated at night. So Take Back the Night was basically a mass movement of women taking to the streets together and taking the night back for themselves for half the population. Um, they drafted a constitution and had bylaws and Tess was the coordinator for all of this. Um, in her papers are also files about men who were offended or upset that they weren't um, centered in the narrative of Take Back the Night and you can see the controversies around that as well. But it obviously made an impact because Take Back the Night continued to thrive at the University of Iowa. So in addition to all of her serious advocacy work, Tess um, made many friends and I hope some of them are watching this. Um, they, there are cards in her papers. There's a card from a friend um, that shows Tess talking to a young child um, after her performance. And <laughs> the friend has added the speech bubble of, to the tune of row, row, row your boat now, smash, smash, smash the state, um, which is pretty representative of the types of humor that we see in Tessa's paper. Um, we also see something that she obviously had pinned up. Um, she was a dog lover and is pictured with her dog in quite a few um, photos and it says what is it with dykes and their dogs anyway unconditional love 
Um, so we get a, a glimpse of not just the activist test, but also the musician, the person, the sports, the athlete. Um, and also later, she became a licensed massage therapist. She moved out of Iowa and um, was nationally certified and lived with her partner in Oregon and until her death in 1999. So why is her legacy so large? Um, we see she was a legend in, at U Iowa in the 80s. Um, these are from the Gazette from October 1999. And um, the, the page on the right is from the Emma Goldman Clinic newsletter. So she had a large reach. She really was not just involved in any one thing. Um, her photos and reach extend to many different files, even here at, at Iowa. Um, we have pictures of her in the Emma Goldman Clinic. We have evidence of her at the Women's Resource and Action Center, um, as well as her own papers and the papers of some of her friends like Jill Jack. So these are just three memorial um, booklets that we have for Tess. And we see her with her dog. And um, yeah, there were many services across the country for her because of who she was and how many people whose lives she touched, how much she affected that change. And it was really powerful to see um, the kind of impact that, that she made. I'm going to show you this last slide about people memorializing tests and feel free to read it and think about um, perhaps what you liked best about Tess or where you met her first while we listen to her song Fitting In. I'm sick and tired of fitting in. I'm tired of shoving and squeezing and swerving and swearing and looking around at those thin eyes are staring. Let me go and be as fat as I know I am. Get your shit off of me and be with me as I am. I'm sick and tired. Of being polite. I'm tired of smiling and chatting and bullshit and crap on the door if I go of kissing your ass and let me go and be as loud as I know I am. Get your shit off of me and be with me as I am. I'm sick and tired of playing a train. along with me on this journey of remembering Tess Catalano. The photos used are from the Iowa Women's Archives, um, and they are found in Tess Catalano's papers, the Emma Goldman Clinic records, and Jill Jack papers.